Slovakia's Prime Minister Robert Fico has been injured in shooting and hospitalized. The incident occurred on Wednesday afternoon after a Slovak government meeting at a location outside Bratislava, news agency TASR reported. Robert Fico, 59, was hit in the stomach after four shots were fired outside the House of Culture in the town of Handlova, some 150 kilometers northeast of the capital, where the leader was meeting with supporters, according to local media. According to eyewitness report, Fico fall to the ground with head and chest injuries. A suspect has been detained and police has sealed off the scene. President Zuzana Chaputova condemned a brutal and ruthless attack on the premier. I'm shocked. I wish Robert Fico a lot of strength in this critical moment and a quick recovery from this attack, Chaputova said. U.S. warships destroyed 65 Houthi targets during operation in the Red Sea. The American Ali Burke-class destroyer, USS Kearney, returning from participating in a NATO operation in the Red Sea, is said to have destroyed 65 targets and ground facilities launched by Houthi rebels in Yemen. According to the American press, citing the U.S. Navy, during six months of combat duty in the Red Sea, the destroyer's crew successfully hit 45 air targets launched by the Houthis, including ground attack cruise missiles, anti-ship ballistic missiles, and unmanned systems. In addition, the ship carried out two strikes on Houthi targets in Yemen, destroying 20 targets. USS Kearney also entered U.S. Navy history as one of two ships to first use Standard Missile 3 anti-aircraft guided missiles in combat. Although the USS Kearney has been in the U.S. Navy's arsenal for many years, it was not used in actual combat until Iran's massive attack on military installations in Israel. It was then claimed that American warships managed to shoot down four Iranian missiles. However, this claim was subsequently disputed by the Israeli press, which claimed that only two of the eight USS Kearney launched by the US managed to hit their intended targets. The US Navy command refused to comment on this information, citing security requirements. The USS Kearney was also reported to be the first US warship to use an SM-6 missile against a Houthi anti-ship ballistic missile in the Gulf of Aden. Besides, the United States called on Iran on Monday to halt its transfer of an unprecedented amount of weaponry to Yemen's Houthi militias, enabling their fighting to carry out reckless attacks on ships in the Red Sea and elsewhere. U.S. Deputy Ambassador Robert Wood told the U.N. Security Council that if it wants to make progress toward ending the civil war in Yemen, it should collectively call Iran out for its destabilizing role and insist that it cannot hide behind the Houthis. He said there is extensive evidence that Iran is providing advanced weapons, including ballistic and cruise missiles, to the Houthis in violation of UN sanctions. To underscore the Council's concern regarding the ongoing violations of the arms embargo, we must do more to strengthen enforcement and deter sanctions violators, Wood said. The Houthis say their attacks on shipping in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden are aimed at pressuring Israel to end its war with Hamas in Gaza. Russia is approaching Kharkiv. The situation is worse than it should have been. Washington Post Ukraine is preparing for a Russian offensive in the spring or summer centered on the Donbass. This attack may yet take place, but at the same time Russian troops carried out a surprise cross-border assault in the Kharkiv region. As stated in the Washington Post, five Russian battalions managed to advance almost eight kilometers deep into Ukraine in just a few days, capturing a number of villages. This could be Russia's fastest offensive since the start of the war. If the Russians continue their offensive, they will again be able to reach Kharkiv with artillery. The scars of Russian artillery strikes on Kharkiv in 2022 are still visible on the outskirts of the million-plus city. The publication notes that it would be terrible if these Russian attacks were repeated. The worst scenario would be the fall of Kharkiv. This is still unlikely, but in order to save the city, Ukraine has to withdraw troops from Donbass to make it easier for the Russians to advance in this region. The publication writes, Russia's success can be attributed to a combination of Russian military prowess and Ukrainian and US blunders. Russian troops improved their fighting qualities from the first days of the war and adapted to the conditions on the battlefield. Most importantly, they used heavy glide bombs to break up the Ukrainian lines. 
Meanwhile, Ukraine's armed forces have suffered greatly due to the long delay in US aid. Russia had a 10 to 1 advantage in artillery ammunition. In addition, Ukraine was running low on air defense ammunition. Ukraine's failure to provide adequate air defense for frontline troops means that Russia has been able to make significant use of air power for the first time. American ammunition and weapons are finally arriving in Ukraine, but it will take months to properly supply all Ukrainian forces. This creates a window of vulnerability that the Russians exploit. While Russia has significantly increased the number of its troops in and around Ukraine to almost 500,000, Ukraine still only has about 200,000 troops at the front. Many units that have been fighting continuously for more than two years have been severely depleted, the publication notes.